Hey guys, Seb here, and in today's video, we're going to be doing another quick Premiere Pro tutorial from turning your boring screenshots from looking like this to looking like these professional animated screenshots. Once again, a super quick, easy tutorial, but if you're new to the channel, my name's Seb. This channel is all about videography, video editing, and photography. If that sounds interesting to you, then do consider hitting the subscribe button, but let's jump right into Premiere Pro. All right, so welcome to Premiere Pro. As you know, we're going to create a cool animated screenshot. So the first thing you're going to want to need is a screenshot of your image. So for me, this one's going to do just fine. I'm just going to increase the scale a little bit so we can see it a bit clearly. What you're also going to need is a color mat. So we're just going to add a black color mat onto our footage. So we're going to move the screenshot up by one and then add the color mat here. From here, we're just going to change the opacity to 50%. And then we're going to go to our background footage. So the background footage here is just to make your screenshot look a little bit nicer and have a bit of movement in your footage as well. But what we're going to do right off the bat is just add a Gaussian blur onto the footage. So we're going to go to the start of our background footage and we're going to add a keyframe right here. Then we're going to move 10 frames by pressing shift and the arrow. So we're going to make it nice and blurry just like that. If you don't want these black borders on your footage, then you can just select repeat edges and it'll get rid of it. But I think it looks pretty nice. And then our screenshot is going to be, let's say four seconds. So we're going to go to four seconds and then we're going to go back to the Gaussian blur effect and we're going to click on the keyframe and then we're going to move another 10 frames and then it just take the blurriness down to zero. So what this is doing is just doing a quick fade in and fade out of the blurriness. So as you can see, it looks pretty nice just like that. From here, we're going to reactivate the color mat and we're going to reactivate the screenshot. And then we're going to add a drop shadow onto our screenshot. So the settings I like to use is make my opacity 100%. I'll change the direction to 220 and I'll make the distance 46. And finally, I'll just change the softness to 65%. So now we've just added a nice drop shadow. Next up, we're going to go back into effects and we're going to add the basic 3D effect. What this is going to do is basically make your screenshot a 3D photo. So here we have a bunch of different effects. We have the swivel, we have the tilt, and then we have distant to image. And finally, we have the specular highlights. What this does is creates an artificial light. And what this will do is add reflection onto your screenshot and make it look a lot more professional. So we're going to set all these settings back to zero and we're going to add a keyframe onto swivel and distance to image. We're going to set those to the beginning right here and we're going to add 14 to swivel and we're going to add minus 5 to distance to image. Then we're going to go to the end of our blur. So we're just going to add a marker right here just so I remember. So the blur ends right here. So we're going to go onto our screenshot here and then we're going to cut the screenshot and the color mat so it ends right there. At the end of our screenshot, we're going to change the swivel to minus 14 and we're going to change the distance to image to minus 10. And here's a quick preview on what the screenshot looks like as of right now. So as you can see, it looks really good already, but we're going to add one more thing just to finish it off. So what we're going to do is add a basic cross dissolve. So this is set as my basic default transition, but if you do not have that, just go into your effects and type in cross dissolve. Now what this does is just do a basic fade in and to me it really tops it off and makes the screenshot look a lot nicer. But what you can also do if you don't like the cross dissolve is we could just add a basic push in effect. So if we just use a push at the start and a push at the end, here's what it looks like. So it does look pretty good but I do prefer the basic cross dissolve but feel free to experiment with different start and finish transitions. So there you go that's how you easily animate your screenshots and make them look a lot more professional. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial and if you did do leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.